Hi guys, so this video is for people that like to cycle with a partner hopefully uh, but they also like to tinker. So I've got a project here to put two bikes together as a tandem when needed but take it apart and make them into single cycles or individual cycles when needed. So I'm going to show you how. So <clears throat> the project here is to uh, <clears throat> make a convertible tandem which basically is how to connect these two bikes and make it a tandem when I want it to be a tandem and take it apart and make them into individual cycles when we want it to be individual cycles. Obviously uh, quite a challenging project, um, you can break it down into several sub challenges. One is I need some sort of a frame uh, connection between the two bikes. Here is a possible design for a connecting frame between the two bicycles. Second thing is I have to somehow connect the front drive chain to the back drive chain. And the third one is somehow get the brakes for the back tire out into the front cycle. And the fourth challenge is of course how do we manage the gear, gear system. And uh, <clears throat> last, I how to do this with the minimum number of changes to the bike because we don't want this to be a complicated conversion process number one and number two I want to use as much of the existing cycle as possible uh, I don't have, want to add things that are not necessary to be added this is the final design of the fa connecting frame and it's time to go to a fabricator and get this thing made I'm in Zuwari Nagar which is near the airport in Goa. This is a workshop that I'm getting my uh, tandem frame fabricated. This workshop is called Shri Vishwakarma Engineering. And I'm going to go inside and show you a few welders, a press, a drill, but uh, I can also show you how they've done a, a decent job of fabricating my frame. So we are walking inside. They've got some farmer jobs. That's Vijay. There's a press. An argon gas stick welder over there. My bikes are standing here. And down here is the frame. It's fabricated. It's just sitting there. It's hot. Sitting there cooling. And of course, we'll show what the fully assembled version looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> we've designed a frame connection and <clears throat> Here, here are the pieces that are welded to the front bike. Here are the pieces that are welded to the back bike. And as you can see, I've got uh, a, a piece here, a, you know, little small pipe coming out with a, with a flat piece. And then I have a frame that's going to connect to these two. This is the frame. It's uh, made out of basically 32 millimeter uh, GI steel tube. Uh, weld it together and it connects to the front bike like that and I've got uh, <coughs> a neoprene rubber uh, packing here which hopefully or, or a little bit of a, a, <coughs> a shock absorption when the two bikes are together and the, it connects to the back bike like that uh, obviously these two wheels come off last challenge basically is how do we manage the gears I think we can leave the gear system exactly the way it is. The front gear system won't be used at all and the back gear system will be managed by the, the stoker. So both the front chain ring, obviously now because with the, the smallest chain ring being used as a drive connection between the front and the back, only the top two chain rings are available. So it gives us 14 gears, seven in the back and two in the front and both can be managed by the stoker from the gear, gear changing mechanism on, on the handlebar of the stoker. Okay, the last piece is how do we lock 
and the idea here is also pretty simple once this wheel comes off we'll have a bolt a simple bolt that goes right through and the, the forks of the of the back uh, cycle will go on that same bolt and we we'll lock it together take the rear tire off from the front cycle loosen up the brakes disconnect the cable take the chain off the rear wheel is off and I'm going to temporarily put this bike on a, a little chair for support it's approximately the right height so I can start working on the on the bike <coughs> so here's here's the the bolt that's going to go go through there and the fork from that from the back cycle will go in here and we'll tighten that together Okay, the second step after the wheel is out and the, the bolt connecting the, the axle is done is to connect the frame to the front cycle and we just hand thread the bolts in first before we tighten them, one at the bottom, one at the top. So on. Uh, using a high strength bolt with uh, allen key head uh, so allen key heads are, are strong they won't strip out easily and then I use one spring washer and then a couple of stainless steel washers I couldn't find a thick one so I'm using these thin stainless steel washers <clears throat> so when we tighten this thing the spring washer will basically keep it from loosening up under you know riding condition Hmm. Now that we have hand threaded these, it's time to tighten. I've got myself a 8 millimeter Allen wrench. I'm gonna get it to where they are snug but not fully tightened. So the rear wheel that we took off from the front bike we won't be needing. Just leave the back tire on the back cycle and we'll just take this out and put it away. <coughs> the frame connected snugly. We've got the axle bolt in. Now it's time for us to take the uh, wheel on the, on the rear cycle off. And again, they are quick connect so they come off easily. So I've disconnected that. Then disconnect the brake. And so basically, <coughs> and then there's the safety clips that we got to remove. and then it just pops out <clears throat> so that's that and we're gonna put this away I'm gonna connect the fork to this axle bolt that we put in there to do that <clears throat> we have to have this the bikes at the right height so I'm gonna have to lift the bike in the front to the right right height and connect it like that <clears throat> and then tighten these nuts around there we'll come back and tighten that properly in the meantime <clears throat> we can start threading some of these bolts <clears throat> of course we don't want any of these cables interfering with us but uh, again, hand thread, align the, the nuts and bolts properly and hand thread a couple in so that it stays in place. So there's one and then do the other one.
Okay, and now time to do the bottom one. Now that it's been hand plated, time to make them snug. And once all of them are snug, we're going to go around and tighten them all completely. So the frames are now tightly and snugly connected. The packing material is in between. All the bolts are tight. Now I got everything pretty much ready to tighten up. So I'm going to tighten up this, these bolts around the fork. And now it's time to start working with the chain to connect the front and the back drive chain. So before we start taking the chain apart and connecting a longer chain, I'm going to have to get these derailers in the right position. So the, the back derailer is going to be on, on one and so is the front. So front is also going to be on one. Now we're going to take the chains apart. These are quick link chains. And so I got a quick link tool here that uh, easily pops open the quick link. And I'll, I'll show you how that's done. So that's the quick link. You can see it's got a, a bigger hole diameter there. And if I pinch them together like this, it'll pop open. Okay, and if you notice, I've positioned the uh, quick link on the top here, and I'm just going to thread it a little bit. It'll probably flop down to the ground, but that's okay. <clears throat> that's why we have these rags. So I took it off from the front. I don't want to have to thread it through the derailleur again, so I'm not going to let it flop from the derailleur. I'm going to pull it over here and lay it down here. And so now what we are going to do is connect another piece of chain through quick links again. I've got another chain that's measured out exactly the right number of links. Also has a quick link on it. And so let's connect one side and then the other side. As you can see, we've been riding around these bikes individually. This chain here is nice and clean. This chain is already dirty. Well, the way to avoid that is to, instead of using oil, use wax. But uh, unfortunately, I can't find the right kind of wax in India. It's supposed to be a wax with PPFE uh, modified. And I haven't yet found it. Once I have that, I'm going to clean all these chains up and wax them. And wax chains don't get so dirty. Once you put the quick links together, it's the same tool that is used to spread them apart also. <laughs> So you can see what I mean by properly connected. It was connected on one side, so when I pull them apart, this side set in properly, this side has not. You can see that it's separated. So I'm gonna have to do that again, pop this back in and hold them together and pop them back out. <coughs> and so now you can see that they're connected properly on both sides, okay? And just to make sure that they are properly linked up, I'm gonna put this thing in back in here and yeah, and pull them till they till you hear a clicking sound. So that one link is done. So now I'll thread this chain <coughs> through the smallest sprocket, the smallest chain ring, I mean over here okay. 
okay and I have to do the same thing over here on the smallest chain ring and then through the front derailleur okay so that's I'm gonna go over here put it through the derailleur first Uh, the quick links are falling off, but that's okay. We'll get them in a minute. Okay, so that's around the chain ring. Put the quick link on, on one of these. Put them in the right position. And got the quick links together. And time to pop them in place. Okay, so that's back and now this is the right way. So as you can see, this one stays on top. I got the, <coughs> the two pedals in the right synchronization. Let's see. The front derailleur is in the right position, the back derailleur is in the right position. We're all set to go. There's one last safety thing that I've incorporated and that is <coughs> we don't want the back derailleur, the, 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 the derailleur of the back chain, the front derailleur of the back chain to push the chain to the, to the smallest sprocket. So I've got a stopper here. There are stoppers already built into the into the derailers, but they are <clears throat> for fine adjustments. I can't get it to I can't adjust it to where I can stop this derailer from going down to the first chain ring, the smallest chain ring. So instead, I've got a stopper here that when I'm going to loosen this and twist it and put it in place so that it actually will stop it from going down there. So my safety stop is in place now. If you look from the top, you can see <coughs> there's a little stopper that basically will not allow this derailleur to come down to the level where it pulls this chain down there. So we can only have this chain go from the largest chain ring to the middle chain ring, but not to the smallest one. Now the last piece of the puzzle here is the brake cable, the extra long brake cable that goes from the front to the back. For that, at first I'm gonna to have to disconnect the back cable. So that's done. I'm gonna to have to connect the, the new cable I got a bunch of Velcros to hold these cables in place. So for right now, we put it there. So this cable goes all the way to the front. So <clears throat> connect in the back first. I'm gonna have to adjust it later on, but for right now, I'm just gonna make the connection. So that's been tightened. This is not needed while we are using it as a tandem. So I'll have this basically wrapped around this. I'll use this Velcro right here to basically keep it wrapped around the seat tube. not in anybody's way okay <clears throat> so it's going to come 
along that and go into this little stop thing and this one as you can see I've got a cable connection here again I could not find a great brake cable that was long enough and so I bought two and I soldered them together and that soldered piece falls right in between these two so it's it's not it's not going to be uh, a problem you know going through the the sleeves so and then go on to the front right here I'm gonna have to take these off this one in so that goes there we'll tie that up in a little bit <laughs> and this one over here and now time to adjust so what I do to adjust is I hold them together till they are tight and then just give a little and then tighten this not all the way enough so that it won't come off then I check to make sure there is free movement of the wheel that's one thing the other thing is that I have the right amount of play here in the front it looks about right so we can go ahead and tighten that down a little bit okay so that's done so I got a bunch of velcros that I'm going to use I got a bunch of velcros like this straps that I'm going to use to strap this thing down so that it's not in anybody's way so let's start there. One there. Maybe one here. Strap all of the cables together. One over here have all these cables together and one to hold this down so that it's not in anybody's way And voila, it's done. So the <clears throat> Go to the flat part. Go to the flat part. Okay. Huh? Get on. Yeah. Go. What's it on? Go. Go. Three plus. Okay. One, two, go. Steady she goes.
Woo! How is it? Okay, so <clears throat> now it's time to take it apart. Since we put it together, we have been on about uh, four rides, total of about 100 kilometers. Uh, in fact, we just came back from one. You can see I'm drenched. This is go weather for you. So to, to take it apart, it's a simple process. Again, reverse order. First thing I do is use this tool to take the chain apart. And I position the quick links over here and here. So when I take it apart, this short piece on this side, I'm gonna no longer need. And that long piece on the other side is basically going to be the chain for my front cycle. So I'll do that first. And then <coughs> I take these four bolts out, two here, two here, two here, and two here. And that'll take the frame out. And of course, I'm gonna have to disconnect the rear brake that is going from the front to the back. And this and, and reconnect the brakes from here to the back as well as the, the back from there to here. That's it. The process is really simple. And by using quick links, I actually can take the chain apart, which is actually the most complicated part in, in a jiffy. So um, instead of showing the, all of this, uh, I'm gonna do the job and then we'll come back and I'll show you when, what it looks like separately now. So, <coughs> the bikes have been taken apart here's the joining frame and all the bolts and the brake cable the two cycles are completely apart about 20 minutes of work i would say it always takes a little bit longer than than you estimate uh, primarily because every time you want to put the bikes together or take it apart you also want to make some adjustments and clean the chain etc etc so but 20 to 20 minutes to 30 minutes and the bikes are back to individual cycles again. That's all folks.